Rognor Gold Gleam, the new Void Epic Dwarf Champion, which has an amazing kit, which kind of screams clan boss, but we want to see how this guy compares to our very trusty Rosin Scarhide. So on this account, we were able to test both of them back to back on the same team. This might not be the perfect team for both of these champions or for Rognor Gold Gleam, but still it's going to give us a good overview of how this champion can perform. All well, that being said, let's jump right in. All right, so I'm going to start with a couple of screenshots for you guys. This player was able to test this on full auto and then one manual run as well. I did a run of my own and then we're going to analyze that run a little bit before we go over the gear of those champions. So the team that we have is a Sepulcher Sentinel, Valkyrie, Rosin Scarhide, or Ragnar Gold Gleam, then a Frozen Banshee and a Vizier Ovalis. A Vizier here is uh, maybe going to skew the results a little bit in the sense of if we want to see if both champions will maintain the decreased defense and the weaken on the clan boss at all times but still in terms of damage though we do have an increased defense from the sepulcher sentinel to affect the rosin scarhide compared to Rugnor Gold Gleam here, which has a self increase attack, which is kind of very nice because you don't need an AoE increase attack, even though it would be good for, let's say, your Frozen Banshee and your Vizier Ovalis. I suppose it's a good swap if you're only looking to replace Rosin with Rugnor. As you can see, the damage is less, but again, they might have different multipliers and other factors come into play to possibly explain why Rugnor would deal more damage. As you'll see in the run, he's in fact taking the hits sometimes because he's taking extra turns. So that skill, uh, the A2, might actually be hurting us. Then we did a run, or he did, sorry, a run on manual. And as you can see, we're much closer to our original damage from uh, the uh, main team. And I did a run of my own where I controlled the first couple of turns to load up the clan boss and then to ensure that Vizier Ovalis would only extend the right ones. And as you can see on this run right here, we have once again a very similar damage output than his manual run, about 3.3 million, 3 million right here. It's still a little bit less than our Rosin Scarhide, but if you guys did not fuse Pixniel and you got Rugnor Gold Gleam before you get your Rosin Scarhide, he might be a really good option, even possibly viable on a counter-attack team. I still believe that because of his A2, he might be best on a like, full-speed team, which makes a lot of sense. If you're just starting out, chances are you don't have a trusty counter-attack. Okay, so all of that being said, now let's look at a run of what I was able to test and what I mean by uh, we do have a couple problems problems here and there. All right, so obviously here we have a Sepulcher Sentinel in the lead. I do believe she is not tuned for a four to three ratio. Uh, we do have our counter attack, which is fully booked. So there is a proper rotation of the skills. I don't think it's exactly perfect. So when I started out the run, one thing I noticed, he was the fastest champion in there. I figured I would apply the decrease defense and the weaken as quickly as possible before we get into counter attacks. Therefore, we deal more damage, but we do get a self buff for increased attack, which is pretty good on our frozen Banshee poison sensitivity before we go into the A1s for some poisons. That made a little bit more sense. Then here I see that Sepulcher Sentinel being slower. She's not tuned for a four to three ratio. This might be a little bit of a problem because we're going to get increased defense right now for the first counter attacks, but then we're going to fall out of sync with this skill. I believe the best way to do it would be to ensure Sepulcher Sentinel is tuned properly for this. So maybe that's something he can work on. Maybe you guys know best, so uh, let me know in the comments below. Then for our uh, Vizier here, we don't want to apply these useless debuffs, right? Because we're going to load up the clan boss with useless stuff. We want to have only decreased defense, weaken, poison sensitivity. We're going to get leech from our gold gleam on the A1, and then the rest has to be poisoned. So the first couple of turns, that's all I did. I just ensured we had the right buffs and debuffs uh, on our uh, debuff, sorry, on the clan boss, buffs on ourselves, and then I let it go on full auto, okay? So uh, we're going to fast forward just a little bit or else this is going to be uh, boring. What I tried also to figure out was if gold mad frenzy you can time it so that he always takes an extra turn on the stun right so every third hit or t third turn of the clan boss you would want him to do that skill then it's on a three turn cooldown but if you get an extra turn always at that time is it perhaps 
able or are you able to properly tune him so that he does not fall out fall out of sync sorry for the counter attack that was the idea behind i guess trying to get this guy to work properly on a counter attack build unfortunately i wasn't quite able to get that to work with this team as it currently is on auto all right so once all the poisons were loaded then i was able to hit the um auto button and then it went on uh for a while at some point though we're gonna see that gold gleam here is taking extra turns at the wrong time he's losing his buffs or his shield his counter attacks and he's even going to take a hit right there you saw he was stunned all right maybe we can back up here a little bit uh so he's going to take that hit from the clan boss therefore he was one of the first ones to die and um, it's not, I suppose, the end of the world if you have everything that was applied and he's not one of your main damage dealers. But obviously, you want your whole team to die at the same time to get the full benefit. So it felt a little bit lost that he would die early. Still, he was able to do his job at applying the decreased defense and the uh, decreased attack of course, with the Vizier, right, making this a lot easier. So anyway, we let this go for a while, and then we ended with uh, a turn count of, I believe, about 30-something, if I'm not mistaken, 31, 32, about 33, which is pretty reasonable for any clan boss team. Uh, but again, maybe a little bit more optimization would make it so that Rugnor Gold Gleam would shine even more. All that being said, now let's go over how he built these champions on his account, and you'll see that they are very, very similar. So Rosin Scarhide, we have him with a lifesteal set, of course, crit, oh no, defense percent gloves, sorry, we have crit damage amulet, we have accuracy banner, of course. Uh, accuracy chess piece. Okay, interesting. He went with accuracy chess piece. I suppose eventually you'd want defense percent here. And he has speed boots. And you could also do defense percent boots. Eventually, that's a little sort of like a way to improve. So total stats, we have 200 speed, almost 4k defense. Anyway, this is pretty good, actually. 56% crit rate. Of course, you'd want this to be closer to 100. And plenty of accuracy, maybe even a little bit too much for the clan boss. But if he uses him, let's say, in the arena, you know what? This is good. And then for the Masteries, we do have Giant Slayer in sort of like a counter attack here. As for Rugnor Gold Gleam, we have War Master. Uh, and then we have the support tree here. Perhaps he's using him elsewhere as well. And then we've got a one hit attack, a one with our leech debuff, fully booked here as well. And then here's what I meant by this skill. If you're able to somehow tune this for him to always take his extra turn after the stun, almost right, because it's 75%, it's not 100%. Is there a way to do that? That was the big question. Guys, let me know if you found out a way to get this to work. But then here's the skill that we really love. 100% chance of applying the weekend and the decrease defense. And then the passive, which will reduce the cooldown by one turn of Gleam of Avarice, which is this one right here, which I guess doesn't matter that much. Maybe you just want it to happen at least once or twice throughout the run. Also, uh, if you have massive shields, on your champion, the shield is gonna take the damage first. So in the beginning, you might actually not get this to be reduced by one turn. Therefore, it's going to fall out of rotation for, a, let's say, a, a, a three turn rotation against the clan boss, right? So again, I feel like he's a little bit tricky to use on counter attack, but then for his stats, he went with lifesteal and two pieces of perception. We have, okay, almost 3K defense. This is pretty good. 2.6K attack, 200 speed, 60% crit rate, very similar to Rosin, 128% crit damage, also similar to Rosin. We have 241 accuracy. I'd say this is pretty much the sweet spot for most of the PVE content. We did this with defense percent gloves, defense percent chess, speed boots. We have a defense amulet, and we have, okay, a defense banner. That makes a lot of sense. You got to do this on uh, attack-based champions most of the time for the clan boss. Now, the other question would be, what if you put this guy in an, in an unkillable build, right? You can go full offense on the guy. So then he might deal a lot more damage than, let's say, a Rosin Scarhide. But... For now, this is the initial test. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you believe he is that much better or a replacement for Rosin Scarhide? Or would you still give the edge to a defense-based champion? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.